Howdy folks, Luke Simons with you, back to the basics 101. So what do you do when you have a barbed wire fence that needs to be stretched, but you don't have a stretch fencer? But you have your, your fencing pliers. I'll show you. All right, well sometimes you're gonna be caught without a fencing plier, or, I'm sorry, without a fence stretchers. Um, all you're gonna have a lot of times is your fencing pliers. <clears throat> And we're dealing with barbed wire that is probably 65 years old. And uh, so when you're dealing with barbed wire that old, make big loops. You're going to want a big loop. Otherwise, if I kink that over too much, it's going to break. So with a big loop, some people think this looks sloppy, but don't you mind them. You know what you're doing here. You want a big loop. And you'll see why because if I twist that tight that wire is gonna break and any rancher anybody's dealt with uh, with the uh, barbed wire much is gonna know exactly what I'm talking about I mean it's already starting to break look at this it's already just starting to break yep it just broke off now look at that it's gonna break so at that point you got your big loop on one end okay you can see how bad the barbed wire is already. This was broke like this, so I have one strand holding that piece of wire together. And, you know, really, it just needs to be replaced. The wire itself needs to be replaced. But, um, you know, something that close to an end on the other side, just cut that off. Don't mess with that. It's just going to break anyways. We're going to put the same kind of loop in this again. Now this is a piece of splicer that I found, just laying in the tall grass, and this is really bad. It's already starting to try to break on me just from making the loop. So you want to make sure that you just don't put a whole lot of tension on this at all. And if you can see, I'm not making tight loops at all. This is really bad wire here. This is more of a temporary fix, and of course, you know what they say about temporary fixes. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary fix. Now you have two big loops, and the reason for it is, is if I put a tight loop in there, that's going to so break. My original big loop, and now my splicer wire, obviously I'm going to come through. And remember, we don't want to put much of a bite on this, so if I use a stretcher, I'll probably break the wire someplace or another. And all I have is my pliers. So at this point, we're going to do something that some of you may have seen, some of you may not have seen. You come in through here, and you hold your plier just like so. Okay? Then we're going to take your tail, I call it my pigtail, and I flip it up. Then what I do is I start to pull this way. Big loop. Just keep pulling. Sometimes you have to work that wire through. Just keep coming through. Keep coming through. This is really poor, poor wire, you guys, so I'm trying to be gentle. Keep coming through. Come on, old girl. Since I got this Gillian Beret French polio, I have no strength anymore. So it's really, really embarrassing. Okay, so the wire is pretty tight. You can see. It actually twangs a little bit just like so now I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna flip it this way just like and then I'm just gonna keep unwinding you can see my wire broke there see I put a little too tight on it that's gonna work okay though and then I'm just gonna come in with a gentle squeeze here this is only a temporary fix to keep them out until until I move the bulls out. And there you have it. Something you don't want your neighbors to see. Well, thank you for watching. I apologize. I haven't been making videos like I I have ought to. Um, I. Three years ago, I came down with something called Gillian Beret or French polio. 
uh, it knocked the stuffing out of me. I was paralyzed for over well, about a year. Uh, I was in the hospital for I think 17 days. I was in um, intensive care for I don't know how many days of that. It was a bad situation. Uh, for seven months, I really couldn't move at all. The The rest of that year, the first year, it was a touch and go thing, pretty paralyzed. Uh, the second year, no feeling in my uh, lower back, lower legs, anything of that nature. And then uh, um, every time I get a little flu or something like that, and it seems like I am very acceptable to these things, I am out for the count. I am just out. Uh, yesterday, I pretty much didn't do anything. The day before that, I was in bed all day long. I came out of bed twice, and when I did, I was just <gasps> breathing like that. Not to mention that uh, last year was a drought, a really bad drought. Um, and even with our grazing practices, we still had to sell over half the cows. Um, and my health has just not been getting, it has been getting better. I believe God has healed me. But, um, when I go down like this, it just very, very discouraging. I haven't been making videos, um, because of this, we've been having a little finances, uh, short on finances, I should say. We're still richer than rich. We know who God is. That makes us very rich. Um, we are strong in family. That makes us extremely rich. But as far as finances go, we have been hurting somewhat. It seems like every vehicle on the ranch is breaking down or in a state of breakdown. It has been a trying, trying time for us here at the ranch. And if you are homesteading and trying to do it full time, you'll know that this is just common procedure. Um, as long as there's been homesteading, ranching, farming, there has been financial str uh, stress. Uh, that is just a, a, a truth that you will have to cope with when homesteading. Well, until the Lord uh, has us meet again, may the Lord guide and keep you. Happy trails. Do you want to say anything, Libs? Not so much. Ha, ha, ha.